Hello, all of you out there living non-religiously. Um, this podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. You can go to www.audibletrial.com slash TNRL. And when you do, you can sign up for a free 30-day um, trial. And with that free 30-day trial, you get a free audio download. So it's a great way for you to get something free and support the show. www.audibletrial.com slash TNRL. Free 30-day trial membership, free audio download. What could be better? This guy out here. I thought it was a good Christian. Jesus, guy on the cross. Hey everybody, it is Monday, August 13th, 2012. Uh, this is Non-Religious Life. I'm your host, Ken. All the way across the country, we have Bob. Hello. And Jason. Hey, what's up? Hello. And we are back from a little mini hiatus. Where I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Bob didn't go anywhere, but Jason and I did. I, I Jason, you went somewhere, right? I my hands, <laughs> trying to stay out of trouble. Damn. I feel I feel like Jason went somewhere. Yeah, I went did, somewhere. Did you? Yeah. Where did you go? Ohio. Ohio. Oh God! Why would you do that? Because we went to the Amish land. Oh, <laughs> and you didn't bring cameras. Yeah, I did. Oh, good. I, have, I, have I know they don't like cameras. I brought cameras and video, and I was inside the church filming them playing the pipe organ. That is awesome. That's so cool. When are we gonna do that? Yeah, when are we going to tackle, like, the Amish and Mennonites? All those strange religions? Uh, have you ever seen the meme with the, uh, with the I, I assume he's a Mennonite, because uh, the Amish aren't very keen on getting their pictures taken, but um, it, it shows him, he's standing there with his beard, and it's like, uh, has has devout religious faith, Keeps his opinions to his fucking self. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's hilarious. Yeah. It's like nice guy Amish meme or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I find it I find it hilarious. Um, I don't funny. think I've ever met an Amish or a, or a Hutterite. I, 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 there are a lot of Mennonites that I I, I've met. Live. There are a bunch living in Massachusetts when I was growing up. I lived in um, in northeastern Maryland, in like very close to Pennsylvania, in what was called Amish country, like Yorktown, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And um, so we would take you know day trips with the family to Amish country, and um, and Jeez. and they they it was, it's funny because they a lot of the um, a lot of like the craft work that comes out of there they call it Pennsylvania Dutch, mm -hmm. and um, they're not Dutch, they're German. But they're Germans, yeah. It's well, Dutch because the German word for Dutch is Deutsch, and it gets Americanized. And Germans think that that's really funny. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think it's funny. <laughs> Pennsylvania Deutsch. <laughs> you don't have to be German to think it's funny. No, no, you don't have to be German to think it's funny. We have. A I remember when I learned that German was Deutsch, Plus, hello. and the Dutch call themselves Netherlanders. Oh no! Who's on our Google Plus? Hello? <laughs> Google Plus is experiencing hiccups. Yep. Anyway, go ahead, Ken. Until we get uh, all right. Um, funny sort of uh, aspect to this whole thing with interesting religious. He's back. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Um, anyone who has been paying attention to the news lately has probably heard about Missouri 
Amendment 2, um, which is it's a sneaky little amendment, and it's kind of something we've talked about before where uh, these sort of religious-themed amendments are snuck in to Congress, and they're, you know, they're phrased in terms that are like, you know, they're, they're about things that don't really matter because they're trying to protect things that are already protected or prevent things that aren't an issue, like, say, you know, preventing Sharia law from taking over. Well, we have a constitution, so Sharia not, law is not going to take over. Um, and this one is called the Right to Pray Amendment. Um, and it, it's very sneaky. Uh, when you pull up the full text of the article, or of the, uh, the amendment, the, uh, the joint resolution is what people saw when they went to go vote for it. And it's, uh, it says, Submitting to the Qualified Voters of Missouri an amendment repealing Section 5 of Article 1 of the Constitution of Missouri and adopting a new one, uh, a new section in lieu uh, thereof relating to the right to pray. Um, but the right to pray is already defended by the state constitution of Missouri and the U.S. Constitution. You have the right to pray. Uh, and this passed overwhelmingly. It was like 80-something percent of the voters voted in favor of it. Yeah, I, my, I, read, the, um, I read the articles, on, and one of the, the things that I couldn't quite figure out, did they, was it voted on in the legislature, or was it like voted on by the population in like a referendum type thing? It's like a referendum. So, so voters, um, like when they say yeah. it was eighty-four percent of voters, not legislators. Yeah, they would say legislators. If it was legislators. This was like a rever referendum. Okay. It was on like a, a state ballot. Right. So, so people voted on it, and on their ballot box, when they voted, it had a bill summary that said what you said, but what it left out was the part where <laughs> students could opt out of. Um, academic curricula if they felt that it violated their religious beliefs or it was contrary yes. to their religious beliefs. That part exactly. left out of the summary. Uh, line 21 and 22 of the bill say that no student shall be compelled to perform or participate in academic assignments or educational presentations that violate his or her religious beliefs. This is already starting to get challenged because this is, I mean... This is a nightmare for public schools. Uh, Christian students could use this to literally just opt out of biology class. Well, you know, you could opt out of anything almost. Yeah, but as far you know, as far as opting out goes, if you if like, hey, this week we're doing the evolution unit, and somebody raises their hand and says, "Well, I'm not going to do this because it's my fervent religious belief that you know this is not true, and I have a a, a biblical view of creation." Like, awesome, you don't have to participate. You fail, but you don't have to participate. So what, yeah. what about the flip side? Let's say that they get to the point where they teach the controversy. They teach. There is no controversy. Well, I know, but I'm just using their, terminolo <laughs> their terminology. And that they teach both evolution and creation. Can, when they get to the section of when they teach about creationism, um, can the ones who believe in evolution opt out of that? I mean, would it... Would it would this law allow the reverse? Um, that's an that's, that's an interesting point, and uh, I don't know. I, I guess I guess they could, and, and we may see that happen. Yeah, but no biology teacher worth their salt is going to teach a controversy, or they're not going to teach creationism in a biology class because that is not a. That is that is a non scientific view of the world. That is a non scientific hypothesis. You know, I was actually. Uh, what what is going on over there? We have a new guest. Hey. Awesome. Oh really? Welcome. Who we got? Awesome. Um. Are these so uh. Just like blinking in and yeah, out. Apparently. <laughs> hey, look! I'm gonna. Hey. Anyway, go ahead, Pop Ken. in. <laughs> um, so one of the one of the interesting things about this is I was actually uh, doing a little bit of research, and I was surprised by the number of uh, science teachers who either do include some sort of like 
teach the controversy nonsense or just completely straight up avoid talking about evolution entirely. I would is that does that correlate with a with a strong biblical view cuz I would almost bet that it did. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it does. I I'm guarantee it does. Um but, I mean, I don't know. Back to the, this law is uh it's it's sneaky because it it's going to allow I, I don't know, you could you can get out of anything. You can get out of math class. You say pi equals 3.14152965. No, it's not. It's 3. The Bible says so. I can quote the section in Chronicles that says it. No, that's that's a really good point. Like now now you could use scripture to get out of math. Yeah. Um you use you know, scripture to get out of ancient history. The um a lot of opponents of this bill were opposed to it not really because they opposed people's right to pray because and I certainly don't people do have the right to pray I I, I you know like the, those are constitutionally guaranteed rights um, but this this the opponents of this bill were saying that it was just going to invite lawsuit after lawsuit at the taxpayer's expense. Absolutely. And I think they're right. Our our educational system is taxed as is. Like, um, you know, we already don't have enough funds to uh, to really provide good education. You know, we lack an education, especially in Missouri. Come on, Missouri, what the fuck are you thinking? Like, you're gonna waste even more money on lawsuits that could be going to educating children. It, it's it, and that's the part that really, really pisses me off. Well, this whole bill is, is disingenuous. And, and the fact that they left that part out about, um, you know, students not participating in academics, like that was left out of the summary. And then the whole thing gets couched in that language that, you know, we've said time and time again is, is, is just made to, to evoke emotion in people where it says, like, you know, this is freedom, this is liberty, this is, you know, fairness. It's not. It's yeah. a bad law. Yeah, it's it's an awful law. It really is. Well, an amendment. Um, sorry. What's that? I said amendment. Yeah, yeah, amendment. Well, I mean, well, you know what you mean. It's a it's an awful piece of legislation. There you go. So. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm wondering when the first lawsuit. Because you know, you probably like like start the clock ticking now. Lawsuits are. Brewing. as we speak yeah I, I i don't know when it goes into effect or if it's already gone into effect uh, i don't know how that works in the state of missouri but and i wonder who's going to be which side is going to be the 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 one to fire the first shot you know do you think it's going to be the um that you know that sort of like liberal side that's just going to oppose some merit or, or they're going to oppose the law on its merits or do you think it's going to be the right-wing fundamentalist Christian who's using the law as a shield to get out of something like math class? No idea. I mean, I it, it could it's a 50-50 shot. I mean, something's going to happen, but yeah, it, it's a you know, it's a powder keg waiting to blow. It really is. Uh no matter how you approach this um Someone's going to be suing someone, and it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna happen soon. And nothing could be more American than that. <laughs> Tort reform, no. Um, so speaking of this, because I, I want to segue into something else that's kind of, kind of hilarious and yeah. sad at the same time. Um, have you been following what's going on in Louisiana? Uh, what's in Louisiana? Uh, Besides, <laughs> there's a new law uh, privatizing public education in Louisiana, and essentially allows for Bible-based curriculum to indoctrinate, you know, kids. It, it's it's part of the whole uh, voucher program. Um, Didn't we talk about this already? This is where they came up with the, the Loch Ness monster and that dinosaurs uh, roam the earth. Well, there was an even better one. Um, I, I was. It was just a couple of days ago. I found it on uh, 
uh, online, and it was 14, 14 wacky facts, and facts is in quotations, kids will learn in Louisiana's voucher schools. And the first one kicks it off right away. Uh, dinosaurs and humans probably hung out. <laughs> they probably hung out. Yeah. I love um, that. I love that meme with Jesus riding the <laughs> the Velociraptor. Yes. <laughs> we don't know that he rode a Velociraptor, but he was Jesus, so he probably did. Probably did. Um. Yeah, we did talk about this actually. I remember because I, I see some of these uh, these things. But number two is dragons were totally real. Totally real. <laughs> that's that's you know um, my uh, my my ex wife my ex wife um, she used to be a a kindergarten teacher at a at a little like private kindergarten daycare place and they taught a christian curricula and um and i was flipping through like their their you know little picture science book and and in in that book um the kids were taught that the literal truth of a of a biblical flood and um and uh you know a a a literal truth of of genesis in this science book it was awful that's awful. That's terrible. Get, get this, because this article actually posts quotations from the books they use. So this is from Life Science. Uh, oh, so my computer's totally going to crash, and I guarantee it. Um, yeah, Dragon's of, totally real. Uh, this is from Life challenge. Science, third edition, Bob Jones University Press, 2007. Which, which, which grade level is this intended for? Uh, I don't know. But it says... Uh, is it possible that fire-breathing animals really existed? Today, some scientists are saying yes. They have found large chambers in certain dinosaur skulls. The large skull chambers could have contained special chemical-producing glands. When the animal forced the chemicals out of its mouth or nose, the substances may have combined and produced fire and smoke. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the... Um... That that speculation upon speculation upon speculation upon speculation. Yeah. Um, see, some of them are some of the things they learn that's in these funny. books are 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 kind of just sad and like really that's what you think. And some of them are just disgusting. Like this next one from America, land that I love. Teachers' education, a Becca book, nineteen ninety four, and I quote. God used the trail of tears to bring many Indians to Christ. Oh, that's awful. What 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 book was that you said? America, land that I love. No, who you you was something before that? That's uh it's the teacher edition of the book. But you said did you say Abeka? It's uh a, yeah. Cuz that was the a curriculum Becca. my ex-wife taught. Oh, really? Yeah, Abeka. Yeah. Wow, and um yeah, it was it was it was reprehensible. That is That's worse. <laughs> That's wretched. the worst thing I've heard ever. That's terrible. Here's another uh, It's okay that millions died on the Trail of Tears, but they came to Christ. They came to Christ, so it's okay. Um, this is from Old World History and Geography and Christian Perspective, 3rd edition, A. Becca book, 2004. Africa is a continent with many needs. Uh, it is still in need of the gospel. Only about 10% of Africans can read and write. In some areas, the mission schools have been shut down by communists who have taken over the government. What? <laughs> Commun this is written in 2004. It's, it, why communists? Did, it, why did they just say, like, some schools have been taken over, or some countries have been taken over by liberals? Yeah. What? Um, uh... Are there any communist regimes in Africa? I forget. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, no, I don't even think there are any socialist regimes, like state socialists. I, I can't think of a single one. I could be wrong. I don't know. But we'll have to yeah. look into that. Um, here we go. Number five. Slave masters were nice guys. 
A few slaveholders were undeniably cruel. Examples of slaves beaten to death were not common, neither were they unknown. The majority of slaveholders treated their slaves well. This is from United States History for Christian School, second edition, Bob Jones University Press, 1991. Well, that's awful. That's okay. It gets worse. From United States History for Christian Schools, third edition, Bob Jones University, 2001. The Ku Klux Klan, in some areas of the country, tried to be a means of reform, fighting the decline of morality and using uh, the symbol of the cross. Klan targets were bootleggers, wife beaters, and immoral movies. In some communities, it achieved a certain respectability as it worked with politicians. What? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Bob Jones University sounds like the worst school ever. Yeah. Um, number seven. The Great Depression wasn't as bad as the liberals make it sound. This is from United States History, Heritage of Freedom, Second Edition, A Becca Book, 1996. Perhaps the best known work of propaganda to come from the Depression was John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. Other forms of propaganda included rumors of mortgage foreclosures, mass evictions, and hunger riots, and exaggerated statistics representing the number of unemployed and homeless people in America. Billy Graham attended this university. Really? Yep. Really? Yep. Oh, man, that's... Like Bill Maher says, this is one of those universities where you fail when you get the answers right. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, really bad. <laughs> well, all right. So um, I know you know we're sort of lamenting the, um, the you know these distortion of uh, distortions of fact by by ostensibly education educational institutions. But did you see that the um, the the pendulum may be swinging the other way because the um, the um, the Jefferson Lies book has been pulled. Oh, I saw that. That's awesome. Even that awesome. publisher was like, nope, this is too egregious to just doesn't, this, this is not true. Yeah, just wretched. I, you know, we've talked about him a lot on here and just awful. He's, he's a wretched, wretched Um. I don't, I don't know what to call him. I don't want to call him a scholar. He's a liar. Liar is a good word. Yeah, just awful. And I'm glad his, his book was... But the book I, I don't want to say I'm glad his book was pulled, but I'm glad people are waking up and saying, uh, no, no, that's not true, you know? Well, that, and that's what I mean. Like, like I don't want to... I, if if you want to if you want to have those those ideological discussions with somebody, you have to have a basis in fact. You know, you can't just you can't just manufacture these these stories out of whole cloth or or bend the truth to fit your will. I mean, it is it is what it is, right? Sl slave ownership in this country was a horrible thing, and yet there it is. It, it it's something we have to deal with. You can't just put a nice face on it and say, well, they were really nice guys. They treated them really well. That's that's horrible. That's that, that's that's you can't you can't do that. And and that's kind of one of the beauty, the the beautiful things about Jefferson scholarship, is that Jefferson really was a man, you know, sort of ahead of his time and in two worlds. Right? He he was an abolitionist, but he owned slaves. And it's those controversies and those contradictions that make it an interesting discussion. But if you deny the fact that Jefferson had slaves, you're just denying the man in general, and you're not on a on a scholarly or even academic footing in any discussion you have. You have to deal with the truth, whatever it is. Well, I mean, going back to the racial thing, uh, Bob Jones University versus the United States in 1983, uh, Bob Jones University got their tax exempt revoked because of their racial discrimination policies. And they took it all the way to the Supreme Court, um, stating that th th that it was based sincerely on their religious beliefs, quote, God intended segregation of the races and the scriptures forbid, um, forbade interracial marriage that's what they told the supreme court so that's why they wanted to get the you know, fought to get their tax exempt back because their they didn't racist succeed, views did they? their racist views um was backed by the bible to answer your question on january 8th 1982 
Ronald Reagan stepped up and said uh, that the case would be dropped and the previous c- court uh, decisions be vacated. So what does that mean? What um, he reversed. He reverses the decision, giving them back. From what I understand, uh, they're tax exempt. The university re- refused to reverse the to re- refuse to reverse its uh, interracial da- dating policy, and paid a million dollars in back taxes. They um, in the following year, the court's decision uh, of the university was declined by thirteen percent, and then in two thousand they decided to drop the no racial interracial dating rule. And then in 2008, they apologized for for uh, being hurtful because of that. Yeah. And then I bet in 2012, they're going to issue a statement that equality was their idea all along. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. That's the next step. That's, it was. That's how it goes. That's how it always goes. But the fact that they, I mean, just recently, I mean, this is not too long ago that they were fighting the Supreme Court, keeping their. Because they were religiously motivated to do so. Yeah. And that's their quote. That was their that's quote. awful. <laughs> that's terrible. That's that's terrible. So. Uh, that's Can you believe it? I mean, it's wretched. I don't know. <laughs> I'm saving my ang- anger for uh, coalesce, so I'm not going. Yeah, get yeah. Into, <laughs> um, get into you know, it. I really do think that I've, I've been. Re- I was. Uh, I was. I was listening to. Um, to. Here, Dr. Professor Robert Price talk over the weekend, and, and, and again, they were talking about these conservative issues, and, and he himself is a conservative, but um, but more like in a fiscal sense. Um, yeah, he's a fiscal conservative. He's he's incredibly socially liberal. He's just you're right. fiscally he's, conservative. He's, he was saying, and you you know, were sort of echoing that, that a lot of these um, these social issues are generational, and it's not that the idea anybody's mind is going to be changed very few people's minds are going to be changed they're just going to die and 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 younger people now are growing up in a world that is that is more liberal minded and, and more attuned to equality and um i've been i was reading a, a i was reading the um the lawrence Krauss book this weekend and he had a he, he was talking about richard Feynman, and one of the things that Feynman said is that even science proceeds that way that you know, law, most scientific discoveries th- they don't get accepted because of the merits of the discovery or or changing anybody's ideas. The old, people who had the previous ideas die, and the new idea takes root in a new generation. Which is that's a sad way to be. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're just like waiting around for all of that that conservative, you know radical right-wing Republican population to just get old and die. But the sad thing is that it, it won't just die off. I mean, we actually have to be active in pursuing to get rid of those ideas because they're not going to die off because they're passing it on to their, their offspring. And Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that um, bringing this back around to uh, Proposition or Amendment 2 in Missouri – the, the 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 motivation for for that amendment was that that vast majority feels like they're being persecuted but okay mm-hmm. it, it, according to the text that I read about this 83 percent voted on it and if you look, compare that to how many Christians are in the state it's 80 percent Christian so I mean it's not that shocking that it got passed right but that but that's the point what I'm saying is that 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 vast majority eighty percent of the of the population that that were there are, are are Christians right yet they're the overwhelming majority and yet they feel persecuted they feel like they feel like they're under attack but that's just because they're constantly fed that line they're fed that meme in church they're fed that meme on fox news they're they're fed that meme throughout <laughs> all Christian Literature that right. they well, read. I'm not saying it's true. Well, I'm not saying those feelings are justified, but that's how they feel. They feel as though they're under attack, and that is why that prompts legislation of this nature. Yeah, I've actually I've written about this uh, this topic before. It's something that I like to call the Christian persecution complex, um, and it's it plays on uh, you know either actual history or fabricated history of of persecutions in the past, and it's that fear. That's just bred into Christians. You you better be a good Christian because 
you know, look what's going to happen. Look, look at when the, the Romans fed, fed us to lions, even though there's little to no evidence that that ever happened. Well, I, th- I think it comes a little bit different from, I mean, from the Southern Baptists, from what I grew up around. It's, it's the, I mean, I find it in myself every once in a while. I'm, I'm like, whoa, is that you're not doing anything of good unless you're sacrificing, unless you're sacrificing yourself. If you're giving up things of pleasure, um, to achieve things you're not doing anything of 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 good unless you're sacrificing whether that's people like using my can i stop you right there so you can just say unless it's sacrificing people (laughs) you're sacrificing people i mean (laughs) whatever (laughs) no but but self-sacrificing is like um for example, I'm not saying this is why I did it, but just using it for example, because I can't think of a Christian example, is my previous job. I worked and traveled 24 7. I did not stop. I constantly was going and going and going and going and going. And I was sacrificing, you know, my leisure time. I was sacrificing my relationship times um, because I, I felt that I needed to achieve this goal, which is not the same thing as with the, Christ- the, the teachings, but it's, it's very similar. And I, th- I think that's where a lot of, uh, ex- at least from the Southern Baptist point of view, is if if you're not sacrificing, then you're not you're not struggling, and if you're not struggling, you're not achieving God's God's path. And I think that's where the the feeling of persecution is, because they they create this false identity that they that's they are sacrif- having their freedom sacrificed because people you know are trying to oppress them because of their religious beliefs. Kind of similar to why why. You know, like anytime you talk about mission work, slavery issues in other countries, it's always like they're over there just giving out Bibles, but the country's coming down and killing them, you know, because they're Christians. And people are trying to take that element and put it in white privileged society here in the United States. And it and it just doesn't work. But I I think that I mean, I'm not I don't think you're wrong, but I think you do. No, I mean I might on the inside. No, I, I don't no, think I, you're I, wrong. I think, I, I but think you're right. I mean you're I, you're right, but I think that the, that that this is apples and oranges yeah. in that I'm talking about a sense of oppression when you are clearly in the overwhelming majority. You know that the, um, this the and I, and I think that they're 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 crying and being vocal because they can. I, I think they're they're trying to to. To win an argument on volume. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a tactic that they use in the United States, it seems, often. Or not just the United States, but uh, I mean, Western society in general. I hate your microphone. Um, you hate my microphone? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm honestly going to get a new microphone soon. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's it. Like, they, there's no opposition, really. No, no major opposition. Uh, that's oppressing Christians in any Western society. Um, so they can't appeal to that, so they have to just win by volume, you know? Make it sound like there's, some, there's something oppressing them. Yeah, you know, preventing, preventing the majority from steamrolling the minority is not oppression. That, that is, you know, preventing the majority from doing whatever it wants is not oppression that is not yeah that is not you know just because they don't get to do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it is not oppression in fact it's you know we, we've said it before that, that it's the a, a lot of legislation a lot of of our constitutional laws and the structure of our of our government is to prevent the tyranny of the majority and and now they don't like it when they were in the minority, well, then it was a different story. But now that you know a lot of Christian fundamentalism finds itself in the majority position, they 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 cry the loudest. When were they ever in the minority? I mean, here in the states. Um, I don't know. Early I on, so. there was a lot of fragmentation between uh, different we're religious. About, we're talking groups. about eighteen hundreds and earlier, right? Yeah, but yeah, seventeen hundred, late seventeen hundreds, so early eighteen hundreds. Not 1800s. a unified majority. Like I think Ken was, is right. It was it was fragmented. Yeah, you had a lot of Christians, but the Christian groups were more uh, 
more at odds with one another than they are now. Uh, if you look at, say, uh, Jefferson's letter to the Danbury Baptists, that's what he's writing about. Uh, the Danbury Baptists were worried about oppression from, I, I think, Episcopalians. Um, so freedom of religion needed to be established. Uh, well, that, and that's the um, that also goes back to the um, the Kennedy speech of uh, I don't know it was like sixty sixty two or something like that where he assures the population that 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 the Vatican will stay out of the White House. Yeah, which is a good segue. Well, first, actually, Bob, why don't you tell all our viewers about our sponsor? Oh, all right, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> So we're still sponsored by www.audibletrial.com slash TNRL. Um, Audible is a source for uh, audio books and audio, um, audio publications. They don't do books. They also do periodicals and, um, and uh, I guess, newspapers. Uh, they have over 100,000 uh, items to choose from. All of it will work on any of your mobile audio devices, your iPad, your iPhone, your i whatever. And if you go to their website and um, uh, www.audibletrial.com slash TNRL you could sign up for a free 30-day membership and with that free 30-day membership you get a free audiobook download. So free book. It's a great way to support the show. It doesn't cost you a thing and we get a little something out of it. Uh, with that uh, support, we would make the show better. Um, maybe get some new computer equipment. Who knows? Because <laughs> our computer equipment always seems to be on the fritz, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and it doesn't cost you a thing. Um, and you get a free audio book out of it. So what could be better? Um, www.audibletrial.com/tnrl. All right. So uh, you were you were talking about. Um, you know, Kennedy and the fact that he was a Catholic. But uh, that segues perfectly into something we want to talk about. We were talking about at the beginning of the show anyway, um, just before we started filming. And there's another Catholic headed towards the White House. And uh, anyone who's been paying attention to the news lately knows that Mitt Romney picked his, uh, his VP. He announced it here in Norfolk, right, too. Yeah, no, right here. Woo! Yeah. Right here in good old that. Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> Um, Which is funny that he announced the representative from Wisconsin on the battleship Wisconsin. Oh, really? I didn't see where where he did the, uh, the thing. <laughs> who was the guy at the? Who was the staffer that thought of that? Like, wait, he's from Wisconsin, <laughs> and they have the battleship Wisconsin. Perfect. They just do it. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. It's awful. Was it a battleship or was it an aircraft carrier? No, it's, it's a, a battleship. Battleship? battleship? Yeah. Yeah. I we promise here. You. What? <laughs> it's a. Um, <laughs> it's a battleship. It's not a. It has big ass cannons on it. It's a. Ba- I didn't. I didn't see the picture. I didn't see too much of it. I just saw that he had announced it from Norfolk. Yeah. I, I remember. All right, so he. So he comes to Norfolk, on the battleship Wisconsin. He he uh, announces his pick for vice president. His running mate. His Paul Ryan. Everybody thought it was going to be Bob McDonald, too. Uh, <clears throat> that yeah, was the speculation. A lot of people were talking about that. Uh, but not to be, not not so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it's funny because I, when all the primaries are still going on, people, there were a whole bunch of, you know, people running for who wanted to be the Republican nominee. And I, I called it with Mitt Romney and I said, it'll be Mitt Romney, but it's going to be interesting because he's such a religious, you know, outcast, essentially, when you're talking about, you know, mainstream conservatives. I was like, there's no way, like, uh, he's going to be able to, you know, really energize that base the way he wants to. It's like Kennedy, because he was a Catholic. And it's funny, because I figured Romney would go with, a like, an evangelical, evangelical Protestant, but he went with a Catholic. So you have two... Uh, essentially religious outcasts when you're talking about conservatives running for the presidency and vice presidency. Yeah, Ryan is um, Ryan's coming under fire. and He might be Catholic, but right now the Catholic Church doesn't like him so much because of his proposed budget. 
they 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 feel that his proposed budget is is unchristian and uncatholic. Wait, the Catholic Church is saying this? Yes. Whoa. Yeah, the Catholic <laughs> Church. He's uh, Ryan has come under fire from the Catholic Church because of his proposed budget because he's the guy that wrote it and and they feel that it does not address issues of the the poor it feels they feel that it um is doesn't represent catholic values spoken from the ivory tower yeah (laughs) so so having said that it turns out that paul ryan's inspiration his his motivation in his fiscal policy and writing the budget is he is a big fan of our favorite Ayn Rand. He is he big is time. he or at least he was an admitted Randian. In I guess in two thousand and five, I think it was, he gave the keynote speech at the Atlas Society. And um he said then that um Atlas shrugged and the fountainhead were required reading for all of his interns and staffers. And that he, um, you know, uh, he was he was an, an admitted supporter of the Ayn Rand philosophy. Ayn Rand, uh, like uh, Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, that's a <laughs> lot of terrible literature to be forced to read as an intern. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. That's <laughs> wretched. The life of an intern that's is wretched. bad enough. Wait, 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 wait. You're not paying me and I have to read this crap? That's no, no. <laughs> Yeah. So so in a in a move that's that's sort of um and, and I guess I, like everything I've been reading about about Ryan is that is that he's supposed to be like the smart Republican. He's supposed to be the the you know like the the Republican young gun that that that's you know the uh that represents this intellectual side of the Republican aisle. And I don't know if that's true or not, but um he has since disavowed his association with Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand, sorry, I don't want anybody to <laughs> angrily email me and tell me that it's Ayn Rand and not Ayn Rand. Um, yeah, so he's he's distanced himself from Ayn Rand, and his reason for distancing himself from the Ayn Rand philosophy is that it is an atheist philosophy. That she was, was an atheist. atheist. She was a vehement atheist, which is maybe. In my eyes, one of her only redeeming qualities, but <laughs> she, you know, she was awful. She was just a wretched, wretched human being. Um, just goes to show that I don't think all atheists are better than all religious people. No, she I think was some an of them are absolutely reprehensible, like Ayn Rand. <laughs> yeah. All she did was just take the books from Anton LaVey and put a, a more conservative slant on it. I've yeah. said that for years. I've said that um, it's like Ayn Rand's books are basically just the satanic Bible for, you know, conservative fiscal nerds, yeah. you know? Uh, it's it's ethical egoism. It, like, just go ahead and do whatever the hell you want. You have no obligation to do anything for anyone ever. And it's just awful, awful. Wow! If you if you want to learn how to be a complete <laughs> narcissist, read Ayn Rand. You're gonna say something. Someone's gonna say something. I was just gonna say that I'm shocked that without rehearsal, Ken and I agreed on something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. No, I've been I've been saying that for years. I, I've, um, and both books are terribly written. <laughs> and they're crap. <laughs> they're crap. I, I have a copy of the Satanic Bible over on my bookshelf. It's I I've tried to get through it a couple times, and it's just, just oh, horribly my, written. My favorite thing about the Satanic Bible is watching the documentaries of the people who believe the the, the writings. I mean, it's almost as good as watching something from Fox News. It's just awesome <laughs> because they're like the Brotherhood of the Wolf, and <laughs> it's, it's all awesome. Well, you yeah, know, I, I yeah, think... yeah. Well, I feel like that sort of era of Satanism is just like it's a dinner theater for fiscal conservatives, you know? Dinner theater. <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say that there's 
there's nothing inherently wrong with the degree of fiscal conservatism. That's that's fine. You know, it's 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 um, it's a matter of degrees, and uh, but but her 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 objectivist philosophy and and outright um almost you know disdain for the less fortunate or the poor or her you know her her emphasis on 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 the self i mean I, she she didn't get there because she's an atheist that that had nothing to do with her with her philosophy it was just she just had a she had a shitty philosophy and it doesn't whether she was an atheist or not is is beside the point yeah look at ann coulter yeah yeah oh no <laughs> um it, it's something with a names huh uh, yeah uh, but there's it's some, easy in the, it's the first in the dictionary but this falls yeah. into that that idea that that you know good works seems to be you know like religion claims dominion over good works and then they point to Ayn Rand because she was an atheist and say like, I see atheists there. That's how they are. But that's not true. Yeah. Well, obviously it's, not yeah, true exactly. because they were supporting it. I mean, how many Republican well, Christians know, have you know that's the funny they thing support? is they, they said they were. Now they weren't. Yeah, because they're an atheist. But right. they knew all along that they she was an atheist. Yes. And now it's just convenient. She was really open about it, too. She was very open about being an atheist, which is really uncommon uh, at the time she was writing. But she was very open about it. And you're right. It had nothing to do with her being an atheist. It had everything to do with the fact that she was a Soviet you know, expat who uh, just hated um, the sort of uh, state capitalism, state socialism of the USSR. And so went 180 degrees in the opposite direction with just you know, laissez-faire capitalism taken to the you know, nth degree. If Reagan so. was here, <laughs> our greatest president. <laughs> yeah, I just, I've been I in know. so many discussions about Reagan lately. God, I don't want to talk about Reagan anymore. The um, the fact that that Ryan abandoned, you know, his his attachment to Ayn Rand because it's an atheist philosophy. I don't, that might be him trying to, like like you said, energize that evangelical right because now he's got to I don't know he's got to do something but I I think that that h- picking him as the running mate has just solidified the fact that that the republic or the republicans cannot win they will not win the election will go to to the democrats yeah no I agree um I said this about the second second election of bush second term uh, I had I had no doubts that Bush was going to win a second term. Um, no doubt in my mind. He didn't win the first election. If he didn't win the second election, it wasn't going to be an issue either. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I it you had a, you had a long shot uh, candidate who picked a long shot running mate. Uh, this is this is McCain Palin all over again. Only you know with a with a bit more charisma. From who? From both. Uh, Palin McCain was a terrible, like neither one of them had charisma. I'm I'm not see. I don't see where. Maybe I'm haven't watched enough videos because I have not seen charisma from any of those two guys. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Romney and Ryan. Uh, Romney can speak when he wants to. I I lived through his governorship of Massachusetts. Um, he can come off as an intellectual if he wants, and so can so can Ryan. Uh, I feel like McCain, Palin, that, they were trying to ride that, the coattails of down home, good old boy Bush, and it didn't work. I don't know. So they're going to try and go the opposite direction. Using big words and trying to sound smart has nothing to do with charisma. No. Uh, Although I, I don't know, I think it does to some degree. If you can show that you're an intellectual, uh, you're more likely to garner followers. Usually, usually, we had eight years of Bush, so I don't want to say always. Um, Charles Manson, all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to decide like who is less unlikable. Was it Sarah Palin or Paul Ryan? But I think I'm, right now, my um, 
Sarah Palin wins the award for the most unlikability, but that's because I haven't seen enough Paul Ryan yet. Oh, you will. Yeah, give it time. Give, yeah, give it, it time. time. <laughs> your, your mind might change. Uh, no, Sarah Palin is probably one of the most reprehensible people in American politics. I don't want to say in American politics. She did half a, half a stint as governor of the least populated state. And a failed attempt at the VP. So I don't, I, I don't even want to say American politics. Yeah. In the American limelight. I mean, I like Ryan with his statement about, about Ayn Rand's philosophy is bad because it's an atheist philosophy. Like, even, even if I was flirting with the idea, like, he just lost my vote. Yeah. Um, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's an unfair caricature of, of atheism. It's not an atheist philosophy. My, my, my feelings towards Republican sound bites is usually dumb shit gets said. <laughs> Leave, like they'll, they'll try to, you know, uh, court a certain population and dumb things will get said. Well, uh, yeah. But how many, the, the question really is not, not how stupid is it, how many people like the fact that he denounced uh, an open atheist. Maybe. I, th I still think the 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 he's not going to get the Catholic vote, or he may he'll get he won't get as much of the Catholic vote as he as he should because of his his associations with Ayn Rand. I don't think a lot of Catholic voters aren't going to buy it, and he's also the guy that wants to dismantle Medicare. Yeah, so he's not getting the elderly vote either. Now you're not going to get old people. And one thing old people do is vote. Yeah. And play yeah, that's, that's, the one, that's the one vote that the conservatives usually count on, too, is the elderly vote. Yeah. I just, I just think it's funny how these culture wars, for lack of a better term, because I don't like this term, culture wars, by the way, but how it's sort of seeping in, it, it's sort of wedging its way into the political debate. Um, because it's not it, it, it's 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 an instance where this has ceased to be about issues and more about who I can claim is an atheist or who I can you know say isn't following good Christian moral values. Um, yeah, it, it's it, nobody. Want, it, it's not about an issue. It's about whose faith is better. Well, it's terrible. Yeah, it's reprehensible and gross. I think we've said uh, reprehensible at least a dozen times this show, and I don't—I've lost count of, of how show. many times it's I've one said of, it's one of my awful. favorite words to describe things that are just awful. I need a new—I need a new word for awful, reprehensible, terrible. But at least we have the title for this episode. Yeah, <laughs> reprehensible. Reprehensible. Not going in the title. Um, if you think no one watched the show that. I titled "No Special Guest?" Question mark. No one's gonna watch "Reprehensible." That was the best title. I yeah. thought I was being witty because we had guests for weeks, and then it was just the three of us. But bad marketing scheme. <laughs> it's bad marketing. If, if you, I, if I've you, learned if, my lesson. If I've you learned put my lesson. no guest with sex, then people would have watched. Right. But. Right. Was that isn't that the story about the Bernard Shaw play that he was contractually obligated to write a play for this one theater and and they held his feet to the fire and they made him do it and his play was called Closed for Renovations. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh that's awesome. All right. Shaw was awesome. But I think it's time to finish up and wrap Shaw it up. Williams. And do it. What not? Um, no, no, I don't so, know if it was Shaw though. All right, but anyway. Closing remarks, anyone? Um, yeah, read about uh, Ayn Rand. <laughs> that should be the, the book that and we And her recommend. atheist philosophy. <laughs> yeah, if you want to uh, if you want to jam a fork in your ear, go to audibletrial.com slash TNRL and download The Fountainhead as your free book. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's on there. I'm sure it's on there. Um. If you want to waste a perfectly good free download, um, but at least you didn't have to pay for it, which would probably make Ayn Rand spin in her grave. 
No, actually, she gets. They still get commission on the free ones. Oh, do they? Yeah. Don't do it then. Don't do it. <laughs> don't, do it. don't give, give them money. Mind. Please don't give them money. <laughs> All right. So if you uh, if you like the show, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can contact us. We listen to all of our voicemails. We check out all the comments we leave on YouTube, whatever, emails, anything. And here's how you get a hold of us. You can call the ZPN hotline, 757-337-2195. Operators are It only by. took me a year to learn that number after reciting it every week. Um, Good job. Yay. Thank you. I don't know anyone's numbers. I don't know my girlfriend's phone number by heart. Um, Yay, technology. Technology. <laughs> cell phones have ruined my ability to remember phone numbers. Um, email us, nonreligious at zombie-popcorn.com. Uh, Facebook.com slash this non religious life. Google Plus. I saw we had people in our Google meetup, hangout, yeah. whatever it's called yeah. thing. I'm not hip to the Google Plus. Damn. Uh, iTunes. You can download all the previous shows. This is, I believe, show number 63. Holy crap. Um, I know, right? Uh, and you can download all of them. If you want to go for a bender and just listen to us talk for hours and hours and hours on end. They may hunt us That's down the and way kill to do us it. if we do that. What's that? They may hunt us down and kill us if they do that. They might do that. Um, if you just want to listen to us on the go, you're not down with downloading shows, uh, you can use your mobile device or your car if you have a brand new car, BMW or Ford or whatever. Use Stitcher Radio app and you can just listen to our our show on the go whenever just load up an episode and listen doesn't need to sync doesn't need to download it just plays live um and as always just go to the website zombiepopcorn.com sign up for the newsletter you get information about this show and all the other shows all the giveaways if you live in the area norfolk hampton roads area we're there's always out, we're branching out great. to other states now for free movies oh really yeah oh shit you don't even need to live there <laughs> woohoo um, great free movies before I was a part of the zombie popcorn family. I used to go to the, some of those things and they were always awesome. Uh, so yeah, check out the website, check out other shows and, uh, we'll see you next week. Woo. Keep living non-religiously. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> great exit. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I thought it was a good Christian. Jesus died on a cross. I thought it was a good Christian. I thought it was a good Christian. I go to church every Sunday. I thought it was a good Christian. I go to church every Sunday. I'm a very religious person. I thought it was a good Christian. The very lion, the serpent, told Eve in the garden of Eden. Confusion and promote lies. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Spread confusion and promote lies. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Spread confusion and promote lies. The gospel.